Welcome to a new ranking. Today we're ranking the ruins of Beverast, Black and Doom Metal Masters, um, with a great discography. And I found a tier list on tiermaker.com, um, but it has a couple of Nagelfar albums in it as well, so just, just ignore them. You know, it's by the same same guys, but we're going to ignore them and just do the Ruins of Beverast ones, because I couldn't find one where it was just for them. So just ignore the even that. But yeah, let's rank Ruins of Beverast from my least favourite to my favourite in a tier list setting. Now, there's no D tier, there's no F tier. Why is that, Questy? Well, because this discography is goddamn awesome. There's no terrible albums. I think there is a mid one, but... There's no terrible, there's nothing below a C tier. So, we'll delete the other tiers, that's what we do on these tier lists. So, without further babbling, without further ado, let's get right into it, rip the band-aid off, let's go straight in with Unlock the Shrine, which is such an underrated album, I'd say, in that catalogue. Like, this album is so dark, depressing, and just downright evil, and it's more... Ah! What's the word? It's more cinematic when I'm listening to it, all the inserts. And I know a lot of the albums have inserts as well, but this one just does it oh, beautifully. Uh, and I know I'm not a big fan, I've said it before, about certain inserts in songs, but I don't know. They do it really goddamn well. Um, the sound is evil, the sound is dark. It's probably one of the darkest and bleakest albums they've done, I'd probably say. Um, ranking it's going to be actually really hard. Ranking, it's going to be very hard. I know the last time we did Slayer ranking, I brought up the Wikipedias for each album, went through some songs, but with Ruins of Beverast, unlike Slayer, where, like, the songs kind of stand out, Ruins of Beverast, the whole album stands out. You know what I mean? The whole album, I listen to the albums in full. I never pick a fucking song. I don't just listen to, like, Antichrist of Show No Mercy. You know, I don't just listen to fucking Angel of Death. I listen to the full album from start to finish. So, I, could, I couldn't even fucking pick you out the songs I like the best. But, as a whole, thematically, sonically, it's really goddamn good. And I don't know whether to put it in A or S. I really like this album quite a bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm putting it in S. I love how dark it is. I love the production as well. Very grainy, very just old school, you know? Old school. Then it brings us on to Reigns Upon the Impure. Which takes everything from the debut and knocks it up a notch. Because this is probably my favourite. This is probably my favourite. This is just so dense sounding. It is just as evil, just as chaotic. But, I don't know, it has a bit more... Um, not melody, because they both have melody. And there's a bit more intricacy within the, within the songs themselves. A lot more doom showing through in this album i love i love the sound of this album it feels bleak it's like it's full of despair and sorrow and just crazy heavy crazy heavy album it feels like i'm getting rained on by the impure <laughs> like, like scolding rain or hail as cam corpse would say just slashing my goddamn back apart listening to this album i love it it's so good. These two albums are just phenomenal. Which leads me on to the next one. Foulest Seaman of a Sheltered Elite. I love the name of this one. This was my favourite for a long time. Um, I still really love it. I still really like it a lot. The opening track, and I've said about tracks, but the the whole chanting that's going on like, really draws me into the music. There's a lot more um, singing I'd say on this one, there's a lot more singing and chanting. Kind of adds to the atmosphere. This is probably the doomiest one they've done so far. And probably the doomiest one they've ever done. I really love the black and the doom. I think it's at the perfect um, split on this album. Not one of them overtakes the other. It's perfectly down the middle. These two, I feel like, are more black metal. This one is definitely black and doom. This one's crazy, crazy doom parts. I love the artwork look at like the eyes just burning the arc it's fantastic it's all around i, I kind of want to put it up s as well but i'm gonna put it in a because i just prefer these two a little bit more next up is blood vaults now blood vaults for me is a b i didn't like it as much as the semen album <laughs> yay but i liked it quite a lot the artwork as well fantastic the riffs killer 
Um, it's a mood, you know, it's a mood of an album. I just feel like it just has stepped down from Phallocene. Some parts which don't work, some parts do. It's not a bad album by any stretch of the imagination. It's just not as good as some of the others. I don't see myself jumping to this one over this one. Like, this one just does it better. And so does the next one, Exuvia, which is also an A. I love this album. It starts off so goddamn weird when I was listening to it. It's got the chanting, like, Ole, Ole. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? It carries on, and it just makes it more interesting and interesting. Exuvia has the most riffs out of the whole discography. It's probably... I don't know, sonically, it's probably the heaviest. Um, it's not as dark or as dense as these two, or as doomy as this one. But I know it has a nice middle ground with all of them. And it's the most unique album out of the whole catalogue. Really love throwing it on. But you can't go wrong with any of these albums so far. Um, even Blood Vaults I really enjoy. But these just... I don't know. Something special about it. Something unique about Exuvia, which just... Makes me feel like I'm in the album cover with this fucking little tribal dude and he's gonna bash my skin in all kind of like a bone tomahawk fucking... <laughs> I was gonna say gnash my nuts off. That's not the right word. Saw me in half from my nuts. If you've seen the scene, you know. Great movie. Love that album. Love that album. And finally, we come to the full grimoires, which in my opinion is a C. This is my first Runes of Beverest album and it kind of made me not want to check out the rest. Which is kind of controversial, I know. But it didn't really grab me as much as any of these others. Like, these others, like, if I started with Blood Vaults, I'd be like, holy shit, this is great. Then I'd go on to the others and I'd be like, holy fucking shit, this band is phenomenal. Whereas the full Grimoire's is very... It's still really good. It still has the doomy atmosphere. It's probably more doomy than some of these. Not as much as this, maybe. But I, I don't know, it's kind of meandering. It doesn't quite hit the highs as any of these it's just kind of pretty good it's pretty pretty good ruins of bear rest album it's just not as close to as magnum magnificent as any of the rest um so yeah i should have maybe gone with a starting with a debut and gone on but it was a nice entry point i, st I still enjoyed it it just didn't blow me away like some people were saying ruins of bear rest is the greatest band ever and i checked phil grimoires and i was like is it seems all right to me it just seems all right so yeah, um, that's my overall opinion on that album. <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, Blood Vaults, Phallocene, Exuvia, Unlock the Shrine, Reigns Upon the Impure. All these are fantastic. Everything from beyond onwards is fan-fucking-tastic. This is just how I'd rank them. My favourite being this one. So we'll go in order. We got Reigns, then Unlock, then Semen, then Exuvia, then Blood, then Fool. Fool, you'll be a fool to not check out uh, Ruins of Beverest because it's one of the best bands ever. And also check out Nagelfar because it's just as fucking good. Um, all these albums, this one especially, woo, masterpiece. But yeah, that's Ruins of Beverest. There's the rankings for you. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know down below your own rankings and we'll see you again on another Quest for Metal.